And it looks like we're live. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, let's see our class. I thought today, I uh, was thinking about doing a painting today. We might uh, tag one on at the end here. But uh, I forgot it was spring break, and I thought, well, let's let's uh, let's go over some mediums here. Um, uh, if you're, you know, if you're going to do canvas or mixed media or pour, painting pours, things like that, you're going to need some some other supplies other than paints. Hopefully you've watched my other video and you got your paints, uh, whether you bought them individually or bought, bought the Arteza set or one of the other sets that exist out there. There's Liquitex, Golden, whatnot. Um, just about everybody's got their own thing. And I went over brushes, uh, I believe last time a bit. And uh, one thing I didn't mention about brushes is uh, there's these foam brushes. You're generally not gonna use these for for painting on canvas per se, but um, sometimes you can, especially bigger canvases. Like this is a nice, good wide brush, and this one's good for um, it is good for you know, like uh, if you're doing like a big canvas. Part thing I don't like about these, um, there are different qualities of these. A lot of them tend to crumble after you've used them once or twice. You can see this one here; it's it's uh, kind of losing, lost some of its. Uh, some of its little bits here and it, it, it does crumble off if you can see that on my finger there you really don't want that kind of stuff in your painting i kind of rolled it up there but uh yeah these do tend to crumble like that one's probably about ready to ready to be retired there permanently but yeah you can see how that comes off and you really don't want that in your painting because it does kind of make a mess unless you're going to use it for texture then maybe but uh seeing as it crumbles like this i probably don't want to use it on a canvas anyway because it looks like it's just you know it'll deteriorate like that so we don't want to do that. So that one, that one goes off to the trash. That's been used you know, a few times, but they they really don't last that long. Um, they didn't do tend to oxidize and whatnot. So, so anyhow, um, you know, but it is better to get even if it's just a cheapy brush. Like this is a bristle from local hardware store. These work great for canvases. Um, you know, especially if you're going to do you know a large area uh, in the you know, on the same color, or if you're just, if you're just putting just the one. One thing you have to be careful with these is they do tend to shed a little bit. Um, you know, this one's brand new, so I'm sure it's pretty, yeah, in fact, there's a, there's a little shed right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see, the, yeah, I guess you can see that. But yeah, that little shed right there, you don't, really don't want that in your, in your paintings or mixed media, uh, unless you're purposely putting it there, and then you might be, you know, cutting one of these up or something for a mixed media project. But uh, anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, I think I went over some brushes. Um, I think I think I mentioned too that I tend to like the uh, tend to like the natural bristle brushes. Uh, most of mine are, are in the water right now and whatnot. And then this one's pretty stained, but uh, you know, I tend. To, this is a very old brush. I've had this for probably 25, 30 years, and it actually still doesn't make it. You know, if you look at the end here, you know, it's not totally flat. You know, it's kind of it's been a little bit. You know, it's 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 seen better days, but it's still functional and usable for some things. Um, you're not going to get little fine lines with it and whatnot. But um, like something that's a little newer, like this is one of my newer brushes here. I really like these. I believe this was from Platt, I think. Um, I really like these silicone um, little grip things here. They're really nice to. They're nice on your hand when you're when you're uh, moving around and whatnot. Um, but if you see, like, even though this this one's been used quite a bit, it's kind of wet. I just pulled it out of the water. But you can see that nice thin like blade edge I got there. Um, so yeah, there you go. I can see that a little bit. Or you can see that nice nice thin blade edge. That's that's the kind of thing you're gonna want to get and then see how wet it gets. And uh, you can paint on that and make a really really thin line like that. And then you can come down like plants do sometimes. And you can get you know like as you're painting along and turn the brush like that and then get yourself a good wide line. So um, anyway, it's, it's definitely good to good to do that. When you get brushes too, I think I forgot to mention that um, when you get them, sometimes they have sizing in them and the, and the brush will feel really hard at the store. And then you get it home and get it really wet and you think, wow, this brush is so wiggly, but uh, that's normal. They do put sizing in them. Sometimes it's starch, sometimes other things. And it keeps, it keeps them from being damaged when they're shipping and whatnot. So anyway, I wanted to go over some mediums today, um, and uh, so let's get to that. Um, uh, one of the first things you're, you're definitely going to want to get is some gesso. This is just, uh, I believe this is a Michaels brand, I think, Artist Loft, I think that's Michaels. Um, you know, you know, definitely, I got a pack of two of these, I think, for 
Oh, I forget. I think with the coupon and everything, I think it came out to about five or six dollars or something like that, which is really inexpensive for that. Um, and this is a student grade, but uh, it actually works quite well. <clears throat> I've actually been been pretty pleased with that. Gesso is what you put down on your surface to make sure the paint grabs, um, um, and it comes in white. Um, and I believe there's a clear. I think. Yeah, I have a clear, um, there's black, here's, um, you know, this is a DecoArt uh, version of black. Um, DecoArt actually, sometimes they have kits so you can buy and get a couple of different things. I, I got these in a kit uh, to try out some of their products. Um, and then this is a white gesso, and there's their black. Um, <clears throat> if, you know, if you're going to do something like for sale, or you're going to actually sell something, probably going to want to use a brand like Liquitex, um, or golden, you know, one of the one of the higher higher ends, you know, more professional grades. Um, Liquitex does make a basics brand, and I do have a few other paints and whatnot. Um, I know those are okay, but if you're gonna if you're gonna paint something for sale, you're really gonna you're gonna want to go with a professional grade, you know, Liquitex professional grade. Um, and you know, clear is nice too, and you can sometimes use it in between layers. Um, you can use gesso, you know, if you if you um, don't want to do a canvas and you just have something like say you want to do a you know, like on some cardboard or, you know, I've got a, I've got like a, a brownie cookie box here that, uh, that I'll probably use for a, um, you know, for like a, a journal or something. Um, just, you just cut the top and bottom off and, and, uh, when you cut the side, you make sure that, uh, if you look on the inside here, there's, um, there's a little, little part where they put the box together right here. And what you can do is cut it so that this this part on this end here where, where they've glued it together you take that off and then use the other parts take the flaps off and whatnot and use the other parts for a book and take the bottom off as well so uh, anyway and then um, after you gesso you know you can do things like putting napkins on them and painting them this, this is one I just started and I forget what this was a box to but it was something but uh, I've just I've just uh, put a napkin on there and um, let me see, I've got another one here. I think this was a cereal box. This one's a little bit larger as the project I started. It's actually for Christmas. And this one is, you know, it's literally an old Cheerios box, I think, or something like that. But, uh, you know, you gesso it so it has that nice white, nice white surface and you're not seeing the, you know, the uh, cereal or, or whatever product you're doing logo through it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing to take something that's, you know, a cereal box and turn it into something like that. And, and like I said, this is just the beginnings of this. I've just barely started that. So, got a, a lot of things to do uh, on that. So, that one's just started. Anyway, um, you are going to want a ruler. This one's pretty old and probably needs to be retired because it's got some little, little, uh, Places in there where I've cut things, like with an exacto knife and whatnot on it. It's got a little gesso on it and whatnot, but there's some little nicks in it and whatnot. I've had this one for a really long time. I think I think it was one of my kids' rulers from school or something. I don't remember. Definitely want a pencil. Um, and it's you know it's good to you know I mean anything about graphite. Um, if you're painting on canvas um, and even if you're painting on anything, uh, the graphite can actually um, graphite can actually come up through your paint. So. Um, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's, you know, if you're just, you know, you're just learning, practicing, uh, it's not such a big deal if you're, if you're doing, um, um, you know, if you're doing something like professionally, you're probably, probably not going to want to use graphite, but for, for most purposes, it's okay. Um, charcoal could also come through a little bit, um, but here's a white charcoal pencil. This one looks kind of nice, um, to use, um, and there's like a regular charcoal, I guess, um, but uh, there, you know, there's different types of pencils. Um, watercolor pencils work really well uh, if you're, if you're, and I've got some in the other room. Um, they're not here with me right now, but uh, they're really nice to have. Um, another, another tool you're going to want um, for sure is some kind of a palette knife. Now, you don't necessarily need one. Uh, a lot of us get cards in the mail, like AARP cards and whatnot. Like these are these are wonderful and make a local cable company and whatnot. And, and uh, well, that one's a paper one. Paper ones don't work so well. But the plastic cards that you get in the mail, or say you've you've got shopping cards and you've used up um, used up your uh, you know whatever your gift card was. The plastic gift cards are really good. So um, you know, I definitely think. Uh, you know, thank the, the companies that send those out. I try to patronize them as well. Because those cards definitely come in handy as, as artist tools. Um, 
And then we have these little, these smaller brushes, and I have specialty brushes for uh, for stenciling and whatnot. Anyway, these come in really handy. I've got a little piece of tape on this one because this one is uh, I use for varnish and whatnot. And you want, you know, when you get a varnish brush. You want something that's fairly wide, you know, if your varnish is like finishing your paint, you're going to want something that's that's fairly wide. And, you know, for smaller projects, I use this one. For the bigger projects, I use different brushes. And I have special brushes I use just for varnish, and I keep those separate. And it's good to keep them separate from your other, your other stuff, because sometimes the varnish gets in there. And you don't want that mixing in with your paint, because um, that can create some issues with that. So, um Popsicle sticks are another good thing to have around, you know, for mixing or for whatever. Pellet knives are good for that too. Um, but uh, sometimes, like if you're gonna do paint pours, these are these are wonderful and they're good to have. The thicker ones, like the tongue depressor style, are a little bit better. These are just something I happen to have around and happen to have handy. So thought I'd show you those. Um, so anyway, so uh, we kind of went over the gesso a little bit, um, and you could actually mix colors in the gesso too. You don't have to use them either clear or white. You can also use black. You can take the white and mix it. Well, if you mix this, like say with a magenta, if you want a nice pink color, that's good for that. Just you know, it's just basically the base coat though. It's just get on there. You can actually paint over that, like a glaze. And most of your magentas are very, <clears throat> very transparent, and your yellows too. Um, but it, it does make it adhere more. And I know that the canvases on the market, they do come pre-gessoed usually. You can get ungessoed ones, but most of the ones you buy in the art stores are already pre-gessoed. But, you know, I've, you know, I've run into a little bit of issues with the, the gesso on there once in a while. Uh, not too often, but every now and then I run into something where, where paint won't adhere to it too readily or whatnot uh, because it either didn't get gessoed enough or... You know, it's been handled a lot or whatnot even though a lot of them are in plastic they can still have issues even before they get wrapped up in the plastic so so it's a good thing to know but you definitely want to get some gesso if nothing else just if you're going to paint or just on canvas or or uh just in your journaling book uh you definitely want to have have some gesso uh palette knives are another good thing you can get these little expensive sets um like that one already broke i think my cat chewed on that one or something I think, yeah, it looks like kitty juice. But uh, anyway, it's nice to have a variety of them. Um, you know, the offset ones with the little zigzag here are really good because you can get into your, you know, you can get in there without getting your hand. You know, like say, say if this is your canvas right here, when you get in there, you can touch that and see my hands, my fingers and whatnot are back here. Um, so you can get in there and um, make some marks or, or even mixing. Mixing is good too, uh, but you definitely want something that's offset a little bit. And there's different types if you're going to get into palette painting with painting kni palette knives uh, or, or with, you know, like knife painting. These are really good to have. This is a great one to have. It's good to just get a little set of these. I mean, they're, they're not the greatest, but, um, you know, they're okay. This is a straight one. I really just haven't used it. So this one's kind of been, on, it's kind of been on its own. Um, will I use it? Probably somewhere along the line, maybe to stir stuff or whatever. But would I use that against a canvas? See, the difference is if I if, see my, my hand here is a canvas and you go like this and you're trying to get the paint on there with that blade on the end, you're going to tend to get that in there unless you're, you know, you're dotting like this and that's, and you can use it for that. Um, but it is good to have the offsets like this. With the bigger knives, it, it's not as critical um, to have that offset because usually you're either, you know, you're using it at an angle, like either you're using it like this or like this um, on your, you know, see if I can get there, you're using it more like this. So your, your hands up above, or even if you're going doing it like this, you can use it either way. Um, whatever way works for you. Um, but they, that, you know, it doesn't make as much of a difference to that. It's, it, it is a nice variety. I think I got these at Walmart or something. Uh, or, I, don't know. I think those were from Walmart, I believe so. So anyway, that, um, you definitely want to get like a set of palette knives. Um, I tend to use this one quite a bit. I have a flat one that's somewhere around here. I think it's, I think it's in the, uh, I think it's in my cleaning kit right now, but, uh, uh, I have a small uh, offset uh, round tip one, much like much like this one here, but it's got a round tip on it. This is a diamond tip, um, and they come in different sizes. Um, the the little kits like this, they're they're pretty good for you know the smaller canvases if you're going to do. Um, 
you know, like an eight by 10, nine by 12, 11 by 14s. Uh, these are really good for that size canvas. Or if you're gonna do smaller detail work on a larger canvas, they work for that too. So, um, but I do like the, the the metal ones. This one's you got to be careful though. These are these are sharp. Definitely don't want to leave them out for the little ones, because you know they are pretty sharp. I mean, I can touch it and grab it like that, but it is sharp. I mean, if I were to run along my hand, I probably wouldn't. Probably would make kind of a red painting that I don't think <laughs> I don't think we'd want to do that though. So um, anyhow, so that that gives you a, a little bit about that. So anyway, so a little bit more on tools. Um, but you're definitely going to want to get some gesso. White gesso is just fine. <clears throat> and that's what most people use on most projects. So um, generally the black gesso you're not going to use as often. It's nice to have around now if you really want a good black background. Instead of having to gesso with white and then, you know, go over it and whatnot. And then there's clear. Sometimes you really want to get, you know, say you've, you know, you've got a background already painted and you just, you know, want to make sure it adheres really well. You can use the clear. Sometimes you can use it for adding a little depth and whatnot. Um, but clear is good if you're going to do it on a surface that you don't want to lose what's in the background. And it does come in really handy, um, especially if you're going to do wood. Um, a lot of people like to do wood. My, my grandson did a, did a project on wood and he's like, Grandma, you know, I know you got gesso. Is there by chance you have anything like a clear gesso? I was like, yep, I sure do. So it turned out real well. But yeah, uh, clear gesso works really good on wood and other and other projects where you're going to want to see see the background. Like say you're painting a picture on on like a, a piece of wood or something. These come in really handy for that. So um, anyway, so that's that's the gesso. If, 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 you're, if you're just going to paint uh, with this... Um, and just you know basic acrylic painting kind of like um kind of like you know uh, uh, canvas type stuff down the road and you're, you're just going to work in your journal white just is just fine and that's and you know like i said i think i got a two pack of these at michael's for i don't know it's, it might have been 15 dollars. i don't know i think it was i think it was only like i think it was like five or six dollars but yeah i got a super sale you know you're probably not going to find it that inexpensive but but anyway it's definitely a good thing to have so there's there's the gessos. I mean, there's there's uh, you know the three real basics: is the white, the black, and the clear. If you're gonna work on wood, yeah, invest in the clear. It's it's nice to have. It's, it's nice to have anyway. Um, some people will make their own, and they just take good old school glue and mix it with some water and some um, some uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, marble marble dust, or maybe some zinc oxide, or a little bit of both, and you can make your own, although this is not exactly the same. Some people say it's the same. No, it's not. It's it's a different product. Very similar, but it's not the same. Um, and I would not recommend using this on a professional project. I don't know, for, for just playing around, just learning, it's fabulous. Um, you know, I, I don't use it, haven't used it, uh, because I got the gesso so inexpensive. It's For me, it's almost as, as inexpensive to just buy the gesso than to to do that. Um, and I mentioned the ruler, I think. Uh, yeah, I did mention that. So anyway, um, a lot of times when people are doing mixed media project, you hear about matte medium. Um, you know, if I'm using a, a professional project, again, I use, I usually use Liquitex. Uh, Golden also has a really good one. Um, but, um, you know, for matte media, if you're going to use it for a a professional project, you're going to want to use something like this. Um, but you can also use uh, Mod Podge. And what they mean by matte media is that it's got a matte finish. Um, so if you don't like a matte finish and want a glossy finish, you can use you can use a glossy. There is also a glossy version of this. Um, I just tend to like the matte, so I use that. And I tend to like use matte paints, and I tend to like the matte paints a lot, so I really like those. But uh, you can use Mod, Mod Podge, too. Like if you're putting um, tissue paper or napkins. In fact, the Mod Podge, I believe, makes a special napkin Mod Podge now to put napkins on for decoupage types of things. Um, but, you know, when you're doing it, and then, um, let me say, like, deco has got their, their matte media like this. Um, but, you know, it's basically just to get, like, a like say, a paper or, or something like that onto a project. Okay, uh, let's see here. Now, if you're just painting, kind of getting back to just painting again, I'm kind of trying to stick to that and kind of getting a little... A little bit here and there, but um, there's stuff called float medium, and there's floating medium, and there's float medium, and different brands will do different things. So you really have to read the labels and see what's going on. This particular float medium, the the folk art plaid float medium, this will make it uh, so your brush uh, moves more smoothly through the paint. It's also good to use with paint pours to make your paint flow and make it even a little easier. 
Um, but it does make your brushes um, a little bit smoother on the canvas. And, you know, you see those paintings where you've got little wiggly lines here and there. This kind of helps take care of that. It will help help those lines come out cleaner. And um, it just basically makes your paint flow a little better. Some people, when they're doing pours, they use that flow trawl stuff. I've never used it, but, um, you know, here it apparently works good because a lot of people use it. So, But I haven't tried it myself, so I'm not sure what... Uh, you know, I'm not sure what the results are with that. Um, also, if you if it takes you time to to you know if you want to take your time and take it slow and you're not worried about dry dry time, you can get what's called an extender, and this will increase what's called the open time or the time that it takes the the paint the acrylic paint to to dry and to solidify. Um, and this will this will increase your open time a little bit, especially if you're doing a large project. This can come in really handy. Some people just like it. It makes kind of makes acrylic paints a little bit more like oils, because um, oil paint takes a really long time to dry. Uh, I had one project, in fact, the first project I ever did uh, in oil, and I did a lot of relief work and texture and whatnot, and I did it all with oil paint because we didn't have all these wonderful mediums back in the day. But um, first project I did took me, I believe it was about two months to dry. Like literally, it took about two months. It was it was pretty crazy, but the paint's pretty thick too. I mean, I've got parts in there where the paint's half an inch thick. But uh, anyway, but this will this will help your your paint um, your paint uh, you know take more time to dry, and that can be a that can be an asset because you know especially if it's warm and whatnot. You know, um, I've seen a couple of gals, uh, I've seen, I think, Cinnamon Cuny, uh, I think, I believe, uh, the Art Sherpa gal, she she uses that. Uh, or some, I don't think she uses that particular brand, but I think she uses a different brand. But, she, you know, she'll tell you to watch your labels uh, because that is kind of a big thing. Um, if you have an area where it's super, super dry and things set up really quick. Uh, next thing is glazing medium. If you want to... They do different layers, and you have a paint that's not as transparent as you'd like it to be. This will this will get that paint so it's not so opaque, and it actually uh, you can use it for faux glazes and whatnot too. Like if you or even you know make it kind of like a stain kind of kind of thing with your paint, so you can mix them with this. Uh, but you mix this with your with your new layer of paint going over the old layer, and it actually will help you help it give it that little bit of more transparency. So you've got that. So and I've just got a couple different bottles of it. Um, you know, I believe it's pretty much the same thing. Or one might be a gloss and one might be a... Yeah, one might be a gloss and one might be... Or I don't know if they, they even have gloss in, in, in one out of these. But yeah, that's what that's for. So you can use it. Kind of, kind of make your paints react a little more, more like watercolors, basically. So you can see through the layers and whatnot. Um, this is a blending gel. Um, this this kind of acts like the flow medium, but it also... Um, extends the drying time, you know, increases your open time a little bit more. Um, it's folk art, Plaid makes it. Um, you know, this is fun on like crafty kind of projects and whatnot. Um, it's good stuff. Oh, and then um, like getting back to the, oh, okay, yeah, the, like the, they're going back to matte media. Um, like, like I said, you know, sometimes they have gloss, like this is the gloss version, this is the matte version of Mod Podge. I'll use this on like crafty kind of projects and stuff. Don't generally use them on, on uh, canvas, but they're good to have around. You know, if you're just playing around you know, want to experiment with some things and see how they go, it's not exactly like the matte media. And it reacts very similar though. And if you do get the gloss version, you're gonna, you know, you open the bottle, you're like, whoa, that smells, that smells strong. Well, that's that's because this has a bit of a varnish, I believe, in it. It's got a finishing kind of thing in it that gives it the gloss. So if it smells on you, I mean, I mean, obviously, if it looks weird, whatever inside or something, there's a problem with it. Um, then you know, you probably want to take it back to the store. But it it will have a it will have a different uh, it will have a smell to it that it, it doesn't smell like the mat, you know. So just be aware of that that there there is a scent to it. And it's not incredibly pleasant, but it's not horrible either. You know, it's just kind of one of those things. Um, and this is a different different uh, glazing medium here. Let me see if I can get that focus. Here we go. Focus, focus. Yeah, this is a tri art glazing medium. Actually, I just bought this. I haven't I haven't tried it yet. I thought I'd give their their brand a try on that too. But uh, let me see. And then we then we start getting into our specialty mediums. Um, and by that I mean stuff that you're generally not going to use on a on a paint on a painting project that you just paint with. Um, 
you know, things like crackle paste and things like that. Like I've got some crackle paste here. I actually have a, a liquid crackle medium as well. And what you can do is, is either make, your paints with this white and this one's clear um and you know you can get the paste or you can get the uh the liquid either way and you can mix these with your paints and uh, if you want to make a make it look like something's old or whatnot you can mix your paint with with either liquid or or um the paste medium you can mix those in there and then let it dry and when it dries it'll crackle for you and then you can you can uh, go over it and glaze it. Use the glazing medium and glaze it with a, another color, and it'll it'll look you know you can make things look old and whatnot. It's really really kind of a fun medium to have. Also works good on three D projects too. Like if you're painting um, statuettes and things like that, you know uh, whatnot. Um, and the, these are some of the more fun things. Uh, there's this thing called triple thick. Um, this kind of, this will leave a nice clear. Uh, gloss glaze. Um, you can brush it on. Um, I've seen people use it on cards and whatnot, and even on canvases, uh, where you just put a dot, and it'll, the you know, it'll it'll just be like a clear little little raindrop thing, and it'll stay there. Um, it's really kind of fun to have those. Um, this is a decor version. This is called liquid glass, and it's this one's nice. I really like this that it has this really pointy. Uh, small little applicator here so you can do really really you know nice little dots and whatnot they come out really clean just make sure if, if you're using these make sure you really wipe this off really well and uh, what I'll do sometimes is just like spritz a little bit of water in the cap before I put it on that way and, and you don't have any clogging problems but the liquid glass I, I tend to like it triple thick and liquid glass can be pretty very similar in how they work um, but I would um, I do like having that that uh, that fine tip applicator. It really comes in handy. It's kind of like some of the writer paints that you can get um, and that you can literally write with on your canvas and whatnot. So those are really nice to have. Um, another product I really really like is called String Gel, and this is like a clear a clear product. You can mix mix your paints in with it. Um, kind of comes out like honey. It's kind of literally like a like a string without having a string in there. If, you know, if you like the look of having a string on your project and whatnot, you can use this stuff. Um, you mix color in it. it. It does dry clear by itself. So, um, you know, in some in some respects, it's it's much like the liquid glass or the uh, triple thick. Uh, but then again, this is a professional version too. Um, this, is, this is a fun one. There's a lot of different projects you can do with this. And you can also um, finish uh, small paintings with it. You could probably probably do a big painting too. I don't know, um, but I've used this on on some of my smaller projects, and it leaves a really glossy finish. In fact, I've got one right here that I just finished not too long ago. Let's see here. And, uh, let me see. But uh, yeah, this is this is a project, and if you can see, let me see if you can catch that. You see that that reflection there? That is that is the. Uh, that's from the uh, that's from the uh, string gel. I literally just painted the whole thing in the string gel, and it came out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can see it's really super glossy, and I like that. It is hard to photograph though. If you're going to photograph paintings, uh, you get professional, you want to photograph paintings, you might not want to do that. Um, you know, unless you're going to you know, video it or something. But if you're going to paint something like for a T-shirt or something, I mean, I work too well. So that's just something to keep in mind. Really super glossy finishes are tough. But, um, you know, it's not necessarily meant to be a finish. But, um, you know, I've tried it on some of my smaller projects, like I said. And um, and they turn out quite well. So and I, I like how it did. I, I saw somebody else, I think, uh, Ginger Cook, I believe, uh, was talking about this for hers, too. I already got, I would already used it for, um, you know, some other projects, you know, adding texture and whatnot things and found out that uh, you know I thought well I'll try it too and I did and it's really wonderful so thanks Ginger um get out to you um everything um what some people like to do is pouring paint pours which is let me see if I can grab I got a paint pour here. I'm sure a lot of you have seen paint pours I know what I'm talking about uh this is one I did recently let me see I did this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, but uh, that's where you pour, you know, you pour your paint and and um, and then you roll it around and whatnot. And to do this, this sort of thing, um, you know, you can do it with really cheap uh, liquid paints and whatnot. 
But uh, if you're going to do it, like I said, distill, um, you're going to want to get some some really good quality pouring medium. Um, you know, some people talk about the cells. That's these little circles that pop up here and there. Let me see if I can show you. Like this is at the cell there. These little things, and basically this spider web effect is basically a bunch of this spider webbing in here. That's basically a whole bunch of cells that have been really stretched out um, by me, you know, rocking the, you know, uh, moving the canvas around. And if you if you want to do something like that, you're going to need to get some pouring medium to get the cells to pop up. Um, uh, a lot of people use, uh, I guess, treadmill uh, silicone or something or some spray silicone. I happen to have this. This, this brand happens. This is like a hair product. And... Uh, there's a, you know, it seems to work just fine. It's just, you know, you can look at some of the, you know, you need to look at the ingredients and whatnot. But this one, this one works fine for me. I use this, the Paul Mitchell smoothing or whatever. I just have to have it in the bathroom and it works just fine. So, um, you know, for, for pouring medium uh, or for pouring, you want to use that. I also use float medium, like I said. I think I mentioned that before. I use this float medium also. With it, it helps the paint even out and whatnot better, uh, a little bit better, helps it flow better. Um, so it is nice to have that. Um, let me see. And then um, let's go to our modeling paste. I know I'm kind of zipping through these real fast here, but you know, I kind of want to give you a little bit of idea of what's out there. Um, you know, if you want to get into doing mixed media and whatnot. So, um, you know, if you want to follow along or whatnot. And then, yeah, so. It, you know, it's just good to know about all these things, and there's so much more. There's so many out there. It's you know different types of mediums and whatnot. It's it's pretty crazy. Let me do these first. Um, okay, there are some mediums out there. Like if you're going to paint on fabric, uh, and you want it to be flexible, say you want to do t-shirts, whatnot, get yourself some fabric medium. Um, I've actually got a couple types of it. I think the other ones in the other room. But um, anyway, this is one of the fabric mediums. But you definitely want to get something. Um, where you can, you know, that's made for fabric. Some of them you have to heat set, some you do not. Make sure you read the directions, no matter what brand you get. Um, definitely read the directions and follow the directions and take the recommendations from the manufacturer because they've made the product, their chemists have made it, they know what it works and they know how to make it work. We can use this pretty much kind of like water. I think you mix this one to one with your, with your paints. Um, it's kind of fun to do t-shirts with and yeah, bags and whatnot, like to give out for Christmas and things like that. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then there's other there's other um, mediums like the this one here. Um, and if you if you notice on a lot of the full cart uh, things, they have stickers on top. And this one's got the glass. It has a glass, and literally that is what it's for. And this is a glass medium. It's for, it's an, an enamel. You can use it on glass. I believe you can use it on metals, uh, metals and plastics and whatnot too. Um, this is a fun one to have uh, if you're going to be painting any glass projects and whatnot. And if you, if you, um, you know, thin out your paint enough and use your more transparent colors, and even if you don't, and even if you don't, there's um, there's uh, different, um, you know, there, you know, whether you, you know, you're going to use it on glass or whatnot. Uh, oh, oh, I was talking about thinning paints. I'm sorry, my phone rang and it kind of distracted me there. But, um, you know, if you thin out your paints and get them, uh, you know, and, and do this on glass, and uh, you can literally paint on glass, uh, like a stained glass effect. It looks, it's a very fun, really, really nice kind of project to do. Okay, now modeling paste. Oh my goodness. Modeling paste, modeling paste, modeling paste. I've got a bunch of these guys and they're really fun. Um, I've got light modeling paste. I use um, dry dex spackling mix for for the more heavy stuff. Like if I'm putting glass or something on something, I'll use I'll use this because it's good and heavy and stiff. Um, you got to be careful using it on canvases because your canvas might stretch out a little bit if you know pushing it on and whatnot. But for harder surfaces, uh, say like wood and whatnot, this works really well. Um, so it's, it's a it's a it's a good product to have around. Also good to get to use for your house too. <laughs> so helps with that. And then here's just a regular modeling paste. They have different consistencies too. This one's um, kind of feels more like a uh, like a gesso, kind of like a heavy paint kind of. Um, uh, this one is um, the light modeling paste is a little bit lighter than that. Uh, the Liquitex I use this on, on canvases and whatnot. And I, I tried some of this. I just got a small thing of this Ranger texture paste. 
And I found I really like this. I really do. In fact, I'm, I think I'm down. Yeah, I'm getting down to the down to the nitty gritty here. Uh, I'll have to get me some more of this. But I really like this because this is kind of like a whipped cream kind of consistency, but it holds up really well too. So I really like that one. That's a really good product to have. And then um, my local Tuesday morning has has um, has these little guys, and I keep these in bags because I've heard that some people have had the issues with them drying out because uh, I guess the lids don't seal real well or something. And I keep the inner, yeah, I'll, I'll open it up and show you. I keep the inner um, little, it's like a real thin piece of foam in here. Let me show you. I think I kept it on these. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I keep this little uh, seal for your perfect protection uh, thing here. I know I've used this one before. Yeah, here we go. But I keep that in there so it has that little bit of kind of like an o-ring seal around the edge so that way it'll keep the moisture in and I haven't had any trouble but I do keep these in bags because I do hear you know they are a little pricey they're not too bad I think these were about four or five dollars something like that which isn't too bad and this one even though it looks gray like oh wow who'd use gray no it, it actually dries a really beautiful silver um I'll have to I'll have to show you guys well you know how I was showing you the chart for your paints while well, I do the I do a chart for these guys too. Okay, this one, this one is is like a silver. This is a nice. I love this one. This is a magenta, and it it um, almost looks like kind of orangey under the light in here, but it is really on camera anyway. It's a, it's a really bright magenta though, and you can mix that with a little bit of white and make it really pop like a pink, and add a little blue and make it a little purple. And it does have that quinacridone magenta kind of, uh, I, I don't know exactly what pigments they do, but I'm guessing that's probably a quinacridone they use for that because it, it does give you that really bright, vibrant purples. And uh, this one, what is this one called? Let me see, is this glossy dimension? Hmm. Let me see. Oh, it does say magenta on here. Yeah, so it, it, yeah, it says magenta. It doesn't say which, which pigments it uses or, or whatnot. But, uh, and then I have this one that's gold. And these are, who makes these? Brea Reese, I guess. Um, thank you, whoever made these products, whoever Brea is. Uh, really fabulous. I love these. They're they're kind of smooth smooth and silky. Um, they're kind of like a light modeling paste. They're a lot like the Liquitex modeling paste. And I will use these on canvases. They're, they're actually quite nice. Um, this is, uh, it says matte metallic. This actually is a metallic black that I really, really like. Um, I don't know what color it says on here. Oh, it's yeah, it says Morris Black in there, but it's a metallic black. It's really, really pretty cool. So, um, yeah, those, those are nice. I need to squeeze the air out of these. But uh, anyway, so that that should give you a start on, on, you know, what kinds of, you know, you don't have to go buy all these today, not by any stretch of the imagination. This is this is a buildup over, over uh, oh, I guess about three or four years of kind of getting back into painting and whatnot. Um, you know, I've I've kind of built up my uh, my repertoire of stuff, you know, brushes and mediums and paints and this and that. I have kind of a quite quite a collection of paints. Um, and another thing you're going to want to get to is tape. Um, and you know, when I start getting into the basic painting, you know, if you think you cannot ever make a straight line, if you can pull tape and stick it on canvas or stick it on your paper, you can absolutely make a straight line. You just put two lines, two strips together, and then um, you know, you just paint right between them and then you pull up your tape and you're good to go. So if you can put tape down, you can do a straight line. This painter's tape is really nice. It tends to release pretty well. If it's been sitting around for a while, it can kind of get a little tacky. So um, some people use drafting tape as well. Uh, the regular, um, I've had some problems with the regular, either when this stuff gets old or, or the regular, um, the regular uh, masking tape. I've had some problems with it sticking and tearing paper and whatnot if you're working on paper. So, uh, oh, hello. looks like I have some people come in here. All right, let me see who's here. Let's see, I see Maria's, Miss Laney. I see Christine G. Hi guys. Um, let me see. It says, hello. Let me see, I thought I was, okay. One gratification sooner than two months. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, I think we all want instant gratification. I agree, Christine. <laughs> well, thank you guys for stopping by. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of going over some of the, I, I was going to start uh, painting this week, but I thought, you know, um, it's spring break and whatnot. My grandson's off and he's with me. So um, I thought, oh, you know what? We didn't go over, we didn't go over all these fun things, you know, but uh, yeah. So, and I, I even have more, but uh, I just wanted to go over the basics of um, of mediums and whatnot. So does anybody have any questions right now? Or are you guys just hanging out today? 
I guess I'll have to wait. I'm not used to doing this chat thing, so I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit. So I'll have to wait and see. But, uh, anyhow, I'll just, I'll just keep going then. But uh, anyway, I was kind of getting ready to, to wrap up here, I think, at least on the mediums. Um, and I think it would be a good thing. I'm still getting used to the chat, so if I didn't catch it right away, it looks like, looks like a couple of chatters I didn't catch right away. So I'm still trying to figure all this out. I haven't figured out all the camera stuff yet, but I'm working on it. I'm getting there. And it's just me, so um, so I got that. Oh, I forgot about this little tool. This is a dotting tool. Um, it's also used for clay, too. Um, and... Uh, Gosh, Fiskers. I can't remember exactly why I got I got it from Fiskers. I can't remember exactly what this came in, but uh, I use it for a dotting tool to make little teeny dots. It's really good for that, you know, especially if you have thicker paint, the right consistency, you can dip it in your paint and make little dots. So, so it's a nice little tool to have, too. You don't have to have them. Toothpicks work just as well, but it's kind of nice to have something you can put in your hand. And then... Um, you know, once you, once you get through that, oh, another another good tool to have is makeup brushes. Oh my gosh, these are wonderful. You know, you can use these to make little squares. You can use them to clean up stuff. You can use them for little dots. And Q-tips are another one. I don't think I have any Q-tips with me right here, but uh, Q-tips are wonderful too. Um, paint with. In fact, we might even do some Q-tip painting in here. Uh, I think we might do that. So. So anyhow, so that's kind of an intro of you don't need everything by any stretch of the imagination and we can even get into like little pieces of this. Is, these are little, um, I think these are colored glass or something in here. And then I, I um, actually, uh, we, had, we had a Secret Santa thing and my Secret Santa sent me these Lumiere's um, pearl paint, pearlescent paints. Um, I've started playing with them a little bit. I keep these in bags too, because uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, lids on stuff, and I'm not certain with these, but sometimes lids with these don't always seal as they should. These probably do, but just to kind of keep them all together, because bottles are really small. I think they're like half an ounce or an ounce or something. But um, but these are fun. I mean, they're they're really good for like cards and things like that, and they have the little nozzle tips on them. But uh, yeah, these are really fun. Um, they're good stuff. So anyway, I do believe that that's going to be about it for today. Uh, we'll get into some painting next week. I will just get into basic painting and then we'll get into the perspective and things like that down the road a little bit. But I did want to go through art supplies because it's so important that you have the right stuff. If you just want to get some basics to get started right now, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you're just going to uh, do the painting with us, um, I think the white gesso is probably one of the most important things. Doesn't really matter what brand you get. Um, if you're just practicing, um, you know, the white gesso, there's this um, Artist Loft brand. Let's see if I can. There we go. This is an Artist Loft brand. It's really economical, too. The Artist Loft, Loft stuff is it's pretty good quality, too. I, I was pretty happy with it. Um, and then there's like Deco Arts got one. And. Uh, you know, I would just stick to the white for right now. I, you know, if you're really serious, you can go ahead and get the Liquitex, or if you just don't care about cost, because you know, Liquitex is more expensive. Um, but it is a professional paint. If you're going to make things for gifts and whatnot, I would go ahead and use the Liquitex, because it is is a good thing. I've got the, the clear here. Um, for now, I've just been using the Michaels Gesso. I'm really happy with it. And it seems to be uh, fairly comparable to Liquitex. I'm, I'm you know, quite surprised at that. Um, and I, I did buy these quite a while back. Um, because I like I've got probably ten things of gesso sitting around here. Maybe not ten, but I've got probably five or six anyway. But um, you know, I I do really like the uh, I like the artist artist loft gesso, so um, it seems to work work for me pretty well. Uh, so anyway, if you um, but if you're just painting, you're gonna want to do that. Um, if you're gonna do the um, if you want to get into um. Mixed media, you're going to want to get some matte media. Again, this is a professional kind. Um, you can even get Mod Podge, um, which works just fine. As long as, it, you know, one thing about Mod Podge and using glue and whatnot is they, these will not hold up in like a humid environment. Um, I haven't really, you know, like in a bath, like say you're going to hang a picture in a bathroom or something, I wouldn't use Mod Podge. I would use something else. Um, 
and you may even want to seal it, you know, you, then you get into sealers and varnishes and whatnot. And I'll probably get into that after, you know, I've done a couple of paintings and whatnot. I've, I've got sealers and varnishes and whatnot. And, and I've been, you know, uh, you know that, and that's kind of gets into like finishing off projects and whatnot. But um, definitely get the gesso. Um, and uh, if you're going to, you know, I mean, definitely get some gesso, get some matte media, you know, or a mod you can use that. Um, you know, for painting, I would say get some float medium, invest in some of this. It's not that expensive and it does make your lines straighter. It makes your paint flow better, in my opinion. It's it's really a good product to have and, it, and it's not that expensive. I think it was about five or six dollars for this bottle or something. I think it was actually, I think it was less than that. I think it might have been three something. I don't know. And this is like eight ounces. You don't have to buy a big bottle. I've got a little small bottle too. I just keep the big bottle. And I just keep refilling it. And I think I got this one on Amazon for, I don't know, about $3 or something. Maybe no, it might have been for, I don't know, something like that. I don't know. It's, I know it's not that expensive, though. Uh, if you want the number, let me see, I actually have the number on here. The folk art number is 868. So if you go to Plaid's website or if you're looking on Amazon or whatnot, you can look for that. It's uh, Again, it's called float, Floating Medium. And, uh, and the number for the small bottle is 868. Let me see if I can get the number off of this bottle. 868 this one is oh this is also 868 oh no it says 868 is a two ounce bottle i wrote on there um but anyway that's the big bottle and you can get this on on the um the plaid website where they you know they they make that that wonderful stuff um so if you're gonna you know if you're gonna paint definitely get some float medium that will help you out um glazing medium um really don't use it that much it is nice to have for mixed media projects don't really use it on canvas that much so uh, if you want to get into, you know, making things with gold, uh, it was crackle paste. That's a good, good one to have. Um, you know, but if you really just want to stick to the basics, I would definitely get some gesso, and I would definitely get some matte media. You know, get some of this, um, or at least some mod podge. Um, you know, for doing like, uh, you know, for mixed media stuff. And you can either get the matte, which is this. Um, you know, if you go to the dollar stores, um, that fact, that's where I got these little balls. Um, they have the gloss, which is the the kind of orange one, and then they have the the uh, matte one that's the yellow. Um, and I tend to get the, the the matte in big bottles, just you know, because I'm always playing around trying stuff out and whatnot. So anyway, so get yourself a pencil and a ruler, and I think I mentioned the teeth square before. Um, foam brushes, you know, I I really don't use them a lot. If you're doing rock painting or something, they might come in a little handy, but don't really use them that much. Um, you know, you might, you know, in addition to the brushes I mentioned before, you might want to get like a stencil brush, um, you know, something that's got a, let me see if you can see that there. It's got a, you know, a bunch of bristles together like that. That's a good one to have. Um, and then there's daubers too. There's like foam daubers. Those actually seem, the foam in those seems to be pretty good. Uh, for stenciling, you can also use these. These are just makeup sponges and they work fabulous, you know, um, but they are like pretty much use them once, toss them kind of feel. Uh, and you can get those at the dollar store too. You can paint with anything. You can paint with your fingers if you want. And there's a lady in, I believe it's in New York, that uh, she's quite famous and she does very large paintings, quite beautiful paintings, and she does it with her fingers, which I think is pretty incredible. Um, so anyway, I hope that I hope that has helped you and learn about some of the mediums and whatnot. And I guess we will pick it up next week, uh, hopefully on Tuesday around 10 or 11 o'clock. I'll, I'll be on uh, Pacific Standard Time. Or no, excuse me, Pacific Daylight Time now. Ah, my bad. Anyway, um, but we're going to be on Pacific Daylight Time. But uh, and then if you know for mixed media too, getting some modeling paste or. Um, Oh, where's my ranger bottle? Here we go. This um, this texture paste. They, these also come, this one's an opaque version. They also have a clear version. I have not tried it yet, but I, I noticed it existed. I thought, ah, so I may be ordering some of that pretty soon uh, in the next day or two here. So, um, and, you know, these are fun too. And these are not that expensive. I got these at Tuesday morning, uh, the Brea Reese uh, things. And they, like I said, they come in different colors and whatnot. I think they have a blue and they got a bunch of different, they probably come in just about every color imaginable. These are just the colors that I found. And I know there was a blue and I, I should have grabbed it. And I thought, oh, when am I going to use blue? And then sure enough, I came home and went, ah, why didn't I get the blue? I, didn't, I had a perfect project for it. <laughs> oh, I should have got it. But it is good to get stuff on sale, which is why I'm kind of taking it slow on this class so that people can kind of go around shop the sales and whatnot. Um, and I think Cortez is having a sale. I don't, I don't, I'm not linked up to them at the moment right now, although I might be down the road. Um, but, uh, you know, like the Cortez set, um, 
of acrylics and I think they I think they have more than one set I think they have a set of smaller tubes that has more colors in it but uh, this set right here the 14 this one you can mix just about anything with I mean it's in it it's a good starter set if you want that I, mean, I, I bought it just to see what their paints were like and so far I really really like their paints I'm really kind of kind of impressed with them and you you know and it's nice because you get um about four ounces in each one there's 120 milliliters in each in each tube um and there's 14 different colors in there and you got a couple of metallics in there too which is kind of nice let me see if i can show you the top of this again for those that weren't, haven't seen the other videos but uh i in you know if you see the you know those the colors don't come on the top like that but i just i just pretty much pop those in there I put I take a little dot of paint and stick it up there on the top so I can see what my colors are. And you know, it is a black background. I probably should have adjusted them before. I mean, I've got, you know, and this is why you adjust it right here. You give you give you an example. This one got kind of something else on it too, but um you can see this right here on this um as they call this one scarlet red. Uh, this is why you just so because that did used to come up to the other edge and it does crack off if you let me see if I can get better 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 shot of that. You know, they will crack like that if you don't put gesso on some surfaces. Um, so you definitely wanna wanna use gesso and I can show you what happens when you don't gesso. If you don't gesso on canvas with oils, I know it can literally eat through the, the canvas, the, the the oil from the paints can. So it's something to keep in mind. But anyway, the Arteza sets are a good set to have. I like that. And I'm sure there's other brands out there that, you know, but I'm sure there's some I haven't even heard of. But I've been around uh, art and painting stuff for quite a number of years. And, uh, you know, there, there's always stuff coming and going constantly. If you bought everything that existed, you would never, you would never, uh, you would have a warehouse of art supplies. You'd, you know, it'd be like living in, in uh, Hobby Lobby, although I wouldn't mind doing that. That would be fun and camp out in there in a tent and, uh, and just have a free reign of all the art supplies. I don't even know where I'd start. That would be, that would be kind of a fun project. But anyway, um, so if you're just painting, definitely get some gesso. You know, there's my, you know, I, I always write on my lids what it is because the way I store mine um, is in a cart. And to be able to get to them all is a little bit tough. Um, we don't do that. You might want to also invest in some stencils. Um, and there's tons of stencils out there. You can make your own. I, I tend to make my own. I just take, you know, I might even do a video on that. You know, I take the side out of a, of a milk carton and I have a, a stencil cutting tool. It does it with heat and I, I cut through those. It's kind of like a soldering iron kind of deal. Uh, and then there's, you know, and then we can get into the finishes later. Like on another video, I'll do, do something about finishing paintings. You don't have to finish them right away. It's actually a good idea to let them dry for at least a couple of weeks before you, before you seal your paintings. Um, so we don't really have to do that right now. But anyhow, whether you bought like the Liquitex or Golden or, or um, you know, craft brand, um, there's a bunch of different craft brands, like the Folk Art with the gold tops is a matte version and a really nice version too of craft paints. Those are, those are pretty nice. Or you get the Arteza or whatever. Um, as long as you've got this out, uh, if you haven't watched my video on the colors, uh, please go watch that. Um, is it, you know, the first video I, of this, of this uh, series. So you can see what, you know, which colors are, are best to have and whatnot. And you can get those in craft paints too. Um, sometimes you have to look for them. You may have to order them direct from Plaid to get some of the colors, but they do exist. They are there, like the cadmium, right? The, you know, the cadmium yellow, the cadmium, uh, the cad red, medium, um, you know, um, you know, just all, you know, the ultramarine, the, either the thalo or the, um, Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of it right now. The Thalo or the other blue. I know they got the Thalo in the Arteza set. And all my other paints are in my cart uh, way over there. But uh, they, you know, I go through the list. They do have those in craft paint um, and those craft paint, craft paint colors, which is pretty, pretty neat that they're doing that. I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I've kind of been you know, mentioning it for a lot of years. And I think they finally woke up and said, wow, people really need this. And they also, you know, also, uh, I believe Plaid is making a professional series of paints now, too. I have not tried them yet, but uh, I might soon. We'll see. But I've got enough paint to last me quite a while uh, at the moment. I've got a lot, of, you know, a lot of professional paints and a lot of crafty paints, too. So I've got enough paint to last a while. So uh, and I've got stuff for mixed media and I've got liquids and liquids and hard bodies and medium bodies and sprays and just about everything so i've got a lot of paint to last well so it might be a little bit before i get another set of paint i just wanted to try the artezas and they had a great sale on it so i thought yeah why not and i started playing with it and i do like them so uh i like my other paints too and i like them all for different reasons so 
anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And, you know, was it click, like, 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 subscribe, like, was it like, subscribe, something or other? Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, click, you know, like, subscribe. Oh, ring the bell to get notified. I think that's the other one, something like that. Um, and have a great day. And thank you for stopping by. And we'll see you next time at the art class. Bye-bye now.